Hey there, everybody. This is Birch. I'm here with Cody. Cody, of course, uh, who has kind of masterminded Ironverse Comics, Jack Irons. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, all things considered. How about yourself? I'm hanging in there. It's uh, interesting times for sure, but you, you've um, you've been consistent through this entire, you know, the, the last several years. You've been putting out some great books. You, you, you've created your own little universe out there. Yeah, we've been working at it, but honestly, that's all to the fans, particularly this last go. I had uh, gone to plan B pretty heavy. I had kind of given up on this last uh, uh, crowdfunding campaign. By the end, we had uh, about 40% to go on the final day, so I was working other things, and then somehow our fan base is like, oh, wait, it's leaving. It's going. We, we better do something, and and somehow we got funded and it's kept us working throughout all of this craziness and gotten some paychecks to some people who needed them at the time. And, uh, it's done a lot of good. It's driven me a bit nuts, but in the best ways. And we're about there till people get to see what we've been doing this whole time. I'm really excited for it. I am too. I think you're, you're, uh, I, I've, I've read, I've read your work and I, I think it's great. Um, uh, it's, uh, well, we'll get to that in a minute, but for people who don't know you, I, I thought, well, can you just kind of tell us a little bit about what you do, the universe you've created, and and I'll put some things up on the screen, and yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, I'm Cody Fernandez, um, writer, creator, of Jack Iron Steel Cowboy, and kind of acting EIC of, of Ironverse Comics, which... Uh, our tagline is the best of the weird space West. We're trying to inject as much knowledge, you know, modern knowledge from, from say manga and other sources into the Western, uh, what would I say? The Western way of making comics and presenting them, uh, particularly, uh, because, uh, We've also noticed the popularity of of manga and uh, other places and different types of storytelling that comics on the mainstream aren't quite hitting uh, mm -hmm. as well as they could. So that's part of what we're doing. But another part, the, the part that kind of manifested it for me is just trying to do what a lot of good stories are, which is share an experience and share thoughts uh, with, a, with an audience. And comics is a beautiful medium to do that. Well, for you know, people seeing it probably up on the screen right now uh, when we, we throw these pages up here, uh, your your work is really distinctive. So, I mean, there's lots, of course, of indie comics out there, lots of crowdfunding books, but um, the, the the title itself, the writing, the universe, the characters, it's it's very immersive, it's very distinctive, and it's it's something I think pretty unique that's out there right now. I would hope so. I mean, most uh, more mainstream attempts at uh, the genre we're exploring have been kind of half-hearted or not leaning the way we're trying to, which, um, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, it was inspired, part of it was inspired by Hex, the old uh, Jonah Hex run that, that uh, when they shot him into the future and tried some Mad Max stuff with him, uh, yeah. a lot of influence there, but um, not really on the story or anything, but the style. And, and the idea, I loved an older cowboy in this future and still being able to function and having all those quirks. I love that idea. So that carried over quite a bit and pretty much anything involving Jack uh, in Ironverse Comics. But there's a lot more in Ironverse Comics. We have a, uh, a manga out as well that was entered into the 100th Tezuka Manga Awards. 100th right. anniversary, I think it was, something like that. And um, that got about 33k views. It's free to read if folks look it up. Cactus Coyote, Tezuka Manga Awards, and you'll find it. Uh, or Cactus Coyote Media Bang, that'll also find it. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. That's from yeah. a, uh, a separate creator, and we've been trying to get more steam there. And Right now, I think currently it is the most viewed of our projects. So I also kind of want more feedback, it being uh, more, more out there and more, uh, I don't know, uh, more attention to it. Um, yeah, we'll put that up on the screen too. I, I, I mean, you're the 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 interesting thing that I, that I take away from the, the stuff you've done, and and uh, it's always been true. And I've, I've you know been following you on Twitter for quite some time, and, and everything else is there's a quality level to the book that you hit that I think's a little um, you you don't see it on a lot of books, and you certainly don't see it on, for lack of a better word, your own imprint. I mean, you're you're keeping that quality high even when it's very different projects. I think so. Uh, people see Cactus Coyote um, and look at it, and it's definitely more of a, uh, it's somewhere between uh, uh, one's first attempt at One Punch Man and uh, <laughs> and what it became. It's somewhere in between there. Uh, it was a very passionate creator, uh, goes by Dollar Coins, uh, that's been working as my co-editor and, and kind of an organizer and uh, a writing mentor, quite a few different things uh, for mm -hmm. what we're doing in Ironverse Comics. And uh, that's his baby. He's 
God, he's a prolific writer. He's got 16 arcs lined up for Cactus Coyote, and he's got about, I would say, God, 30 issues written just waiting. Uh, he's yeah. been working constant inspiration for <laughs> particularly where, where um, Jack Irons is at. But um, the, on the quality level, I've just blessed that a lot of – talented artists have wanted to work with me work on these projects and that uh, we've been able to pay them <laughs> that's the big one uh, and so uh, that's again all on on the folks who saw what we're doing and, and appreciate it much like yourself uh, it's it's a hundred percent a fan-made property i couldn't have done this by myself i mean I, I wrote the original scripts back about 13 years ago and then you know i i I muddled through. It was persistence there. I'll give myself credit mm -hmm. on that. Um, about five years back, I met uh, Maxie when I f fell into some some money and some hard times, and just a way to to escape both those things and have a goal. And uh, we got the issue done for far below what it should have. I was able to meet this wonderful Argentinian artist, uh, Maximiliano Dallo, uh, through Craigslist at a local oh, wow. McDonald's. Uh, he comes he, he comes up here to, to Mexico once in a while to visit his uh, family and um, just wow. timing timing uh, Jack Irons is, is a book and Ironverse Comics is a series built upon good timing and, and loyal fans and um, again like I was saying the, the last crowdfunding campaign funding last day out of nowhere um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of love behind this book it's not the most financially uh, grabbing but we pay our artists extremely well, and as you you said, we get quality out of it. We get great work, and they appreciate it. Our fans appreciate it, and yeah. we're ending that campaign this uh, this month. Uh, digital will go out at the end of the month for issue number three, and um, it's the last chance for folks to get in on this before there's a bit of a holding pattern between these three and our next uh, next project which is probably more jack but uh i'll be telling <laughs> folks that as as we move forward well i i mean I, you know i there's kind of two tracks to take here i i, I mean before we go to the comics um I, you, you're doing something i think a little bit unique or i don't see with a lot of creators is that you you do you know ironverse comics you've built a brand you've built a an imprint whatever you want to call it and when you go to the site you look at it you see comic books for sale for certainly you see that you're on comicsology, you're, you're pushing kind of into the different avenues. I mean, you, it feels like a small publisher. It doesn't feel like an independent person making kind of one comic at a time. It feels like you've created, a, you know, a publisher. You've got statues up there. You've got this, this manga that you're doing here. You've got uh, clothing and apparel. I mean, you, you, it's the full package. Um, why, why'd you go down that route? <laughs> uh, again, financial stability, you have to put your hands out as much as possible in the most uh, you know, effective ways that you can find and uh, get, get feedback and tweak and go from there. Um, Rags, when I started out the, the book Rags and that wonderful team, they were one of the few to reach a hand down, notice what we're doing and kind of help get us some awareness. And so I've taken a lot of lessons from their work uh, and applied it to ours. It's very different and, and the, the ways you can leverage the series and the art and all that's very different but there was a lot i could learn for just do it there's no excuses that yeah. was a massive one and they're great at that they get it done no excuses <laughs> and well, um, we're trying to and um not as successfully but we have all those avenues open and with persistence hopefully one will click and mm -hmm. uh that's the way to get it done as far as i can tell <laughs> no, I mean, it, I think you, you build a more stable platform and you're just, you're behaving like you're, like you're, like a publisher, you're behaving like you're a business, um, even before you have all those pieces in place. And I think it, it does, you know, you, you get some credibility. I mean, when people go and look at this, it doesn't feel like they're, they're buying kind of an individual comic. You, you've separated yourself above because you've got a lot of these other items here and it, it just, it feels like a more stable thing people are jumping onto. Yeah, well, I, that necessitated the the vision of of what I was doing. D Jack Irons, though, it's the first thing to manifest the biggest quality name in terms of the release, and you know, people have had it in their hands, all that great stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it it was not envisioned as that from the beginning. From the beginning, it was me wanting to do some kind of uh, almost Midnight Suns meets 
uh, uh, Justice League kind of thing in terms of you have these edgier, almost heavy, in, in my case, heavy metal themed characters. Mm-hmm. And you eventually work towards what we're working towards is more of a One Piece style grand adventure. Instead of introducing the characters through uh, like One Piece, you follow Luffy, but you still end up meeting and learning all these other character stories. It was a wonderful way for uh, Oda to uh, accomplish what we're doing in one series. What yeah. we're trying to do is the same thing through multiple series, through multiple perspectives and multiple titles in a universe where a bunch of different writers, a bunch of different artists can tell any story almost like a Star Trek. That's what we're working towards. Uh, yeah. We're we're about there. Uh, Cactus Coyote is working out the space logistics and all of that through his series while I set the tone and build character and history in the other series. And hopefully they will meet in the near future in terms of both uh, uh, storyline, but also in, in the greater fan base and what we're trying to build. Oh, very nice. So all set in the same universe. And it, it is this interesting mix of Western and sci-fi, uh, some of these different elements coming together. Uh, which, which you know, it, it, it's not done very often, but the times when it has been done, it's been very distinctive, remembered. I think 2000 AD has certainly, you know, played in this space. I think uh, uh, East of West by Hickman yes. played in this space. Um, I mean, it it feels like you're tapping into something that, that there's a lot of fan interest for, but not a lot of product. I think so, too. It's so much so that when we started marketing uh, issue number three's campaign earlier this year, uh, Frank Martin Jr., the colorist for East of West, reached out to us and said, hey, is there something I can do? I love Maxie's lines. Can I help you guys? And, uh, of course, we spoke for a while, and he originally was going to color our issue number one piece, but then COVID hit. Uh, Uh, Marvel's going pencils down for a little bit hit him. He went through a divorce. (laughs) And then then by right now, and then, then, of course, he's been on so many of their covers, like as soon as they were ready to go again, he was just swamped. So it did not work out. I put that update out, I think last week that kind of explained the situation to backers and showed them the cover that we ended up with, which was still incredible. Our art team is is amazing. There was no worries there on getting, again, quality, but I was a bit worried that people had maybe some folks maybe had backed for the three issues or two exclusive variant, uh, covers uh one of them from from frank i was a little worried about that but uh so far the response has been way more than kind i I tend to find that our backers are unbelievably patient as well as supportive which is something easy to take advantage of and we do our damnedest not to we want to prove worthy of it well you communicate well i mean so i've been following you for now quite some time i mean well i think at least two years um, yep. and, and you communicate very, very well. Uh, and it's, it's one of those campaigns where I, I don't think you have to do too much to earn trust. If you, if you do the right thing, you put the right foot forward. I think people want this kind of content. They want to trust, they want to enjoy it. And you've, you've done a great job of building that audience. And I think it's, I, it feels very, I mean, like I said, it, it's always great when you have a dedicated audience and, and it, it, I think you've done the right things. I don't think they're they're hugely magical things to just communicate well with your crowd, but you've done it, and I, I think that's good. That's the thing too. I I mean that should obviously be the standard. I, I it should be something that uh, everybody's working at. But different projects, different people, and different reasons to buy and enjoy this content. Um, as long as people get something that they enjoy then on the end of the path, I don't really judge anybody else for doing what they do to get it done. But uh, yeah, there there, there has been a clear uh, way to go from my perspective since the beginning, uh, mainly because I was terrified of joining social media to get the campaign done. Uh, (laughs) Two years ago, I was a big privacy advocate. I wouldn't have touched it with a 15, 20-foot pole. But again, life got in the way. I needed something positive to work on. And uh, I tried the campaign without social media, got 10 bucks. Then at the beginning of of, uh, uh, 2018, I joined Twitter and a few other places. And that's when some indie doors were getting kicked open on awareness. customers were getting a little bit more angry and fed up with some things. And uh, I don't know, there was a door open there uh, Mm -hmm. that I was able to uh, take part in. And uh, because of our quality, because of uh, the communication and uh, the desires, I hope, uh, 
people latched on and have been supportive. Um, not crazy supportive in terms of we've blown up. And I think that's also partially to our lack of polarization and our lack of pandering. Uh, my goal is not to make you feel good with the book. I want you to enjoy it, which, yeah, is a positive feeling, but I want you to engage with it, which isn't always going to be pretty ideas or pretty subject matter. But uh, I want to do that with the utmost honesty and, and desire to connect with those parts of you as well, uh, the reader. And um, I think yeah. people see that, and I hope we can continue to provide that. No, I, I think, you know, there's there's a lot of noise being made right now around uh, both publishers and crowdfunding and different – all over the place. And a lot of it's being built on a certain tension level or or just there's – there's reasons behind just a good product. And I think from, you know, again, I've, I've known you for two years now. I've, I've sold for senior, senior comic and, and been to your site. And I think it's, it's just by keeping it consistently high quality, um, you're just proving it on the page. And I think that's going to serve you a lot better in the long run for sure. That's, that's our bet. And as you said, in, in your kind of overview of our work, which again, very appreciative. Thank you so much for taking the time oh, again yeah, today totally. too, um, that, uh, uh, I lose my train of thought and, and that I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's, it's a good, I mean, it, it reads like a good comic. I, I, that I, I, it, I, it, it will support our future endeavors. We've got a long plan. That's what you said is that yeah. you, you don't think we will ever fulfill, uh, the promises of this universe and i i think that's that's very true i do know that i i do know that we might never be able to explore everything that's in there but everybody on the team wants to try and i think we're we're gonna do it as long as people want to let us do it <laughs> well and I, I think that's it's it's good to build a universe that's got more in it than you're ever going to fully explore i think that that idea of a mystery the idea of of even, I mean, and fans like to engage with coming up with their own ideas and their own stories and, and everything else. And I think you've created a universe that is bigger than your characters. And that's a good thing that, that it's, it allows you to keep going. And, and so I hope you do. So actually, uh, you know, taking a step back for a second. So Jack Irons, if, if somebody is new and they're like, I, I'm interested, I see some art, I see some parts of this book. How would you sum up? What's your, what's your pitch? How would you describe this book to somebody coming in and saying, I, I want to get involved in this campaign. Sounds pretty good. Well, if you're already that far in, I would assume you'll you'll enjoy what we're doing. Uh, one of our biggest selling points is that beautiful combination of art where we try and uh, communicate a, a, a grittiness and a, a a a rough hardness. You know, as a hard life. Um, mm -hmm. And, and combine that with these bright, vibrant colors that, that sometimes give it a cyberpunk or futuristic feel. Um, I think if you're already engaged with that, you'll like what we're doing because that idea of combining these old traditions with, with new methods of looking at them and new experiences being presented to people – of a very stronger tradition, um, I think you'll enjoy that. But uh, my my main pitch is is it, it's an immor a reincarnated immortal tries to find freedom and purpose in galactic Armageddon. Um, mm -hmm. That's my one line kind of pitch for for Jack Irons itself. Uh, for Ironverse Comics, it's an exploration of these physically manifested vices and good people, good beings attempts to oppose and live within the system that they're given so it's it's a pretty genuine general uh uh idea so there's a lot of stories to tell in that but um again uh there's a few very specific ones we're trying to hit and hopefully we're doing that so how far do you think this could go so you you've got the third issue here i do you have some kind of dream like if, if man if, if everything just took you got you keep growing your audience keep going how how long would you want this to go or do well, you have, have a, a limit? <laughs> <laughs> we have an ending worked out. And that's a beautiful ending uh, for all of Ironverse comics. And oh, it does hinge on Jack. We have a beautiful ending for it. Uh, it's probably the same thing that kind of, not the same idea, but the same basis that I'm, I'm guessing Oda also built off of is, you know, there's this King of the Pirates thing. That, that's what I'm going to have to resolve by the end. It's something kind of like that. Our, our universe, the Ironverse Comics universe, is, is built on these four manifested vices, the four horsemen, and mm -hmm. they're out in opposition to them. So you can kind of guess where that's going is that they'll defeat these vices. Now, right. um, will that happen? I don't know how long it will take. I don't know. But, uh, right now, Jack is opposing them on earth. Kex coyote is opposing the 
actual situation uh, among the galaxy, which is uh, much worse than Earth. Um, and um, the hope would be is that we oppose this corrupt government. We oppose these uh, four evils that that corrupt government fights, and that's what props it up. And uh, we move from there. Uh, there's a lot to these four horsemen that would allow to go even beyond defeating them in one uh, one universe or in one one story overall story but um honestly again that's up to to folks funding it right now we have the material to just drop things if we wanted to to just put out tons of info and stories and have this universe already out for folks but we're still leveraging and earning the the stability to do that and uh one step at a time <laughs> No, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, you know, you, you want to have a bold vision at the same time. You don't want to go too fast and get over, you know, over yourself. <laughs> get to where there's more than, than you can actually uh, do. But um, it, it seems like you're on the right track. I, like I said, this, so this campaign ends this month. And then at some point you're going to just then reassess, get ready for the next campaign. Um, how, what, so you, you, you print comics, you have digital, can you, I think a lot of people are, are I, I ask the question from time to time, a lot of people have been very reluctant to go to digital. How will this digital do for you? Okay, there's a lot of ways to look at it. <laughs> yes, so, <there> so, <laughs> so financially, very poorly, <laughs> first yeah. off. But secondly, it gets books into readers' hands. So yeah. that is amazing, period. Um, that's where I come from currently. Now, um, some people have the vision of, you know, digital, a, a, uh, uh, might not be reaching everyone might not, uh, uh, might not be all that sustainable if that was your pure model. But of course there's plenty of places that prove that wrong. Uh, you have the, the Korean webtoons, uh, uh, make of it, uh, where, where that's just part of their culture and that's mm -hmm. straight digital to a free platform, uh, where you can support creators and that's a whole different, you know, ball game, but there is the love for, for the sequential arts period in all different kinds of ways. And I think getting too bogged down into how it's presented to the reader, uh, because say digital has the, the worrying, uh, bit of piracy or, or whatever. If you get too bogged down in that, then your creative drive and a lot of other things is, is that energy is focused in a place where it's not maximized. So my, my hope is that if somebody went through the effort to obtain my book, that they enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's where I come from, period. And hopefully that means they'll want to support our work down the line. And if not, I still was able to get that story to a reader. And if they enjoyed it, then its job was accomplished on my end. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, as you're building a brand, it feels like that's kind of what you have to do. I, I mean, there's there's not a... You, you can either fight it or you can make it work for you. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, exactly. And that's what we've done kind of from the beginning. Uh, part of the initial traction I was able to get at the beginning of 2018 is because we had offered our digital on a uh, free site where you can go and read the whole digital of number one in black and white. That was the main thing that people's like, well, I don't know this guy. Character looks cool. All right. And then they would move on. But if they have a link, then maybe they are interested enough by that art, by the, the engagement to actually take a look and read through it. And if they enjoyed it there, I teased them with color pages and redone, <laughs> redone stuff and, and a, a possible continuation. Uh, if people read issue number one, it is very much set up as a one shot. I had no idea if anything else was ever going to be made, but I had this opportunity with this wonderful artist. So we got it done. And, um, I've been leveraging that since, and people can still go and read the black and white Jack Irons on ironversecomics.com. Just go look for the free reads, and you'll go right there, and uh, hopefully you enjoy the read. That's one of the other ways that we try to uh, minimize that digital concern on our end. Uh, if people want want to read it for free, they can. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think I, I think it's it's smart to use the medium that way and, and everything else. What? Yeah. I'm trying to just also kind of steer if, if people are, if, if there's a new reader who's thinking about this, what kind of comics do you think that uh, people like, if, if you like this type of comic, you're going to like Jack Irons, or you're going to like an Ironverse comic. What, what would you say is the right, you already mentioned One Piece. I think that's a very interesting connection. Um, and I love the way that I love, I'm a huge fan of One Piece and, and Oda, yeah. so I think that's awesome uh, for world building. But what other, what other things do you think would steer people toward you? Um, it's a weird Western science fiction fantasy book. There are elements of all of that throughout every of our titles. Um, I would hope 
one of our titles, uh, Cactus Coyote's more manga, more goofy. Uh, it's a gag manga, uh, Cactus mm-hmm. Coyote. So if you like Dragon Ball, if you liked uh, some of some of One Piece's kind of more gaggy uh, arcs, a little bit more of its silliness, but with that that tension built into it, you'd love Cactus Coyote. Jack Irons is more of a think philosophical, uh, <laughs> philosophical, uh, a philosophy <laughs> piece yep. uh, that uh, not everybody's going to dive into, but we tried to make it ease as easy as possible as relatable as possible maybe not easy but but relatable and and try to get you into this character's head and where he's coming from which is my attempt to express a united view of 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 history dealing with the future dealing with with what we're kind of looking at the precipice of now and um their attempts to to live in that and, and grow and maybe make it better um so if you're you're interested in horrendous odds but a very powerful very uh uh <laughs> very independent character uh jack irons is, is going to be right up your your alley if you liked clint eastwood his films i'm uh primarily the the man with no name trilogy hopefully there's a good amount of link there um jonah hex readers will probably like it i came from a uh, ghost writer and punisher kind of reading background so if you like some of garth ennis's kind of humor uh there's a little bit of that i'm not as edgy uh, i don't really have the desire to go as far as he goes <laughs> yeah. but um there's some of that dark humor in there uh, just because it's a very um i think you said before too it's a fatalistic character but not in terms of everything's crap it's in terms of everything's crap now but we're still here and that's a good thing <laughs> well, it's, and, uh, it's, the world is kind of i mean it, it sums up it's interesting because you know in going through the first issue and and the different comics you've got this this color palette that at times is very sci-fi very very hopeful in in some way i don't know if that's the right word but then it's vibrant it's bright yeah, yes it's vibrant. but you're clearly operating in a very dangerous world there's some some you know you got you got real violence you got real stakes and it's uh it's it's a it's it's an it's a world that is clearly uh, I don't want to say coming to an end, but it's 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 it, it's, it's <laughs> I don't know. It it's, should feel like it's coming to an end. Yeah, it is, it's it is, basically it's, a plaything for four evils, and one of them's gonna win. Is kind of the the bit we've been putting out is that eventually these things fight against each other, but someone's gonna find a way over, and that's going to be existence, and yeah. we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And so you've got this hero who clearly the odds are, are stacked against him. He's in a world that is, uh, is dangerous and, and, and not to his favor. And there are different characters that you have bringing in out of the mix. It's, it's a, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good character study in addition to building a really kind of very unique immersive environment. So I, I, I know I'm a big fan. I've always been a big fan. It's not clear through this. I just think it's great work. Well, I appreciate that. A lot of um, the feedback we got on issues one and two from avid comic readers, people who read a lot, is, is, you know, it was a little too much. It was just a little too much for them, either in in the lore, which sets up the the flavor for me when I was writing it. Um, It's just a lot of people felt it was unnecessary, and they wanted more of an action book. My hope is issue three will bridge that gap. I didn't make a hard left or a hard right. I was just like, okay, how can I present the same ideas but be more engaging to these readers? And I think we accomplished that with issue three. I'll hopefully find out at the end of this month, and that'll be a big relief either way, because then I'll know which way to kind of grow again. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. I, I, so yeah, actually, you bring up the question I was going to ask. Do you get feedback from customers? How do you how do you balance between you know what's I don't, I don't know if that's the right word, but legitimate and illegitimate feedback? How do you sort through? When you know a fan or a reader is trying to tell you something that is really going to help your comic, something you want to steer toward, uh, versus maybe just somebody who's, who's venting or complaining, or you know, because this is something the the bigger comic industry I think really struggles with right now. Well, they they're dealing with a much bigger cacophony, and sure. and of course, <laughs> uh, you know, level than I do. Uh, it's not much of a. I've gotten no. Nobody said they hated the comic. The worst phrase I've gotten on a review was, "It's half a good comic." Now, I don't think that's that bad. That means we're halfway to being a good comic. That's great. It's better than a bad comic, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a way to tweak. And that was one where you know I would have preferred the the lore, all of this. I tried my best not to present it as exposition, but this, this uh, reader got it as exposition, so they're right from their perspective. Um, 
I, I tried to to balance that a bit more, do a lot more showing than telling in issue three. Uh, issue two was very heavy on the world building because I wanted you to understand the mechanics of what Jack is dealing with both on a physical level, but also on a greater, almost zeitgeist level of this universe. And um, that's tough to communicate and balance. So uh, that was the biggest learning curve. But yeah, I've, I've never really gotten a bad review. That was the worst I got. And there was quite a bit to learn from it because he was very specific and, and it wasn't uh, coming from a place of malice. It was an avid reader who reads a lot of comics and this was on his stack. He got to it and it wasn't his favorite read. <laughs> I want yeah. it to be his favorite read. So I would like to, to balance that. Now um, I would like some more heavy ne negative fe feedback so I can recognize it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we haven't gotten it yet. We haven't reached the amount of people a and most folks who are backing a crowdfunding campaign. I'm thinking they're going to be biased. It's just how it goes. Yeah, sure. They, they put more money towards a book than they normally would, even <laughs> a big two book, which yeah, it's saying a lot. Um, and, and and you know they believed in the creator, they believe in the art, and so they're gonna like the book, maybe even just subconsciously, even if it's not what they expected or 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 uh, you know what they'd usually want. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can reach a wider audience, I'm sure I'll get more of that feedback. Uh, Westerns aren't the biggest genre right now. Fantasy isn't the biggest genre. Sci-fi is pretty close, but we lean, we lean definitely uh, in all three in, in different ways that maybe won't appeal to every Western fan, won't appeal to every sci-fi fan, won't appeal to every fantasy fan. And so I, I expect more negative feedback than we get, but um, I deal with it the same. I, I would judge it on how it's presented to me, uh, the, the words they use, and, and you know, uh, if there is value to it. Now, I'm really stubborn. I'm a very stubborn person, so it's hard for me to, to pivot too much anyway. Just naturally, it's this is my vision. This is what I'm going to do. But maybe I can, again, ease people into it better. And uh, that's been the goal of three. And I think we pulled it off. It's kind of uh, uh, if Lone Ranger versus Tonto. That's kind of how I worked it. Right. And um, it, it's, I, I hope, I hope it lands. Um, there's some amazing, each book, Maxi has upped his, his art skills and he's upped what he's been doing. He's younger than me, which surprised the hell out of me. And he, <laughs> he just puts out great pages very quickly. And um we between one and two we also had to get a new colorist because comics at that time uh matthias laborde uh the first person to color our, our first uh, well the first person to color our issues but also the colorist of issue number one um he had to leave due to financial concerns and now we were paying industry rate uh, at least in the industry rate so that you know, uh, you know very well that that's a different, but from different companies. But we oh, yeah. weren't um, definitely higher, and and with this campaign, we 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 surpassed what most uh, 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 creative teams are are making from the book, which surprised the hell out of me because we still had to negotiate. Like you know, this is still lower than what I thought they deserved, but it's what could get the book done at a lower price. And uh, so that, we, we support our artists, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's hard out there. And this oh, yeah. year I was glad. Again, I'm just so grateful. Anybody who backed our book, who's listening to this later, thank you so much. It made a massive difference in, in enthusiasm and in, in having something to do with all of this crud going on and um and, and just supporting sure. these artists uh, they needed the work we were able to provide it and they gave their best efforts because of that and again i hope people will see i just hope people will see what will not only see it of course but but will enjoy these efforts and hope hopefully help us grow well i mean the work looks great as i mentioned the coloring the, the art i think it is the compliments the artist and the story is, is very solid you you you've got a good product on your hands. Um, I, I you stayed out of the kind of political social zoo that has kind of enveloped comics and just focused on comics. And I, I I'll be honest, it feels like that's a double edged sword. On one hand, I, I really I applaud you. I think that's the right thing to do. You focused on what's important. On the other hand, some people have been able to use that either direction to you know get more attention for their campaign. Do, do, do you feel like that's that's hurt you at all by not kind of going all in on kind of one group or another? 
It certainly uh, hurt the financial bottom end. There's no question. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I didn't want readers who wanted to support a message that might not be in the book. And I want readers to support something other than our work because it's the work that deserves the support um, because it's what they're helping make. They're not – some people think it's they're helping to make the creator, and that's very true with crowdfunding. But – that's not where I came from as a creator or as a reader. I, I, it was the stories that mattered to me. It was uh, the message and, and the conveyance. And so I didn't want to muddy that in particular because of, of the messages and, and the mission that we're trying to do with, with Ironverse Comics. Um, I mean, Jack's a character that is literally as many human cultures and ideologies and, and thoughts and lives that could fit into a single person. Right. I don't want to isolate that from, from that very basis alone. I, I can't isolate anybody. Um, and uh, I don't want to, um, I'm gonna just because no works perfect, but, uh, there was never a reason to, to go either way. I've been, I don't know. I I'm friends with everybody who will let me be friends with them. <laughs> and so, um, I've been blessed on all kinds of sides from, from amazing pro pro creators to underground indie creators to mid tier indie creators. Uh, um, uh, you'll be hard pressed to find a bad story about me <laughs> no. uh, for, from, from anybody. And that's how it, should be from my perspective because we're all engaging in this wonderful medium that needs more support needs more voices needs more leverage behind it and you can get that leverage a lot of different ways but i don't want to sacrifice sacrifice for that leverage i, I don't want to i want to build the ability and strength to to have that leverage i don't want to uh change the perspective so that this stronger implement of thought or implement of marketing can be used um, that will color the product. Now, I don't know if that's true, but it's worked out for me so far in terms of, you know, we, we've gotten it done so far, but um, yeah, it, it's true. There, there's been a, a, a definitely less support than I believe the book deserves in terms of finances and in terms of the audience, I think who would appreciate it. But I think that's also part of the sacrifice of, of allowing that room to, to growth down the line. But mm -hmm. um, that might not be true. And I might be making that a very bad decision, not taking, not striking where the iron's hot. Um, but well, it, um, you know, yeah, out, right. It's, it's exactly. It's hard to say where it all goes. And mm -hmm. I think that, um, I mean, I, I, I can relate. Um, I've tried to do the same thing. I try to be nice to everybody, all groups, listen to all sides and, uh, and everything else. But it, you know, it's, it's, it's the elephant in the room. I think that, you and I know I'm not I'm not purposely ignoring one name or another. There's a lot of different groups. I want to ask you about. Mm -hmm. You've used Indiegogo over Kickstarter. Was that uh, what? What led you to that decision, or, or was there? Did it really matter? It didn't really. Uh, uh, so when, when I first joined social media, I heard Indiegogo. I'd only heard of Kickstarter uh, before then, but I heard Indiegogo, and that's where there was a bunch of heat when I started. So that's right. where we built our base. So that's right. where I've been uh, continuing. Now we've only done. We've done four campaigns. Uh, the first one I said, you know, only got 10 bucks is before social media. Second one got about 8,500 by the time it finished. Wonderful. We got the two issues done. I got a publisher out of it, Wicked Publishing. Great folks. And I uh, got the issues in the folks' hands. Unbelievable. Um, and then uh, uh, we did another campaign for Cactus Coyote where we're going to do a traditional, more Western comic based off of the, the more mangaka style work that he did. Uh, that got $777 and did not reach the 7777 we wanted. Uh, and then uh, we did this campaign. And again, last day, Hail Mary out of nowhere. And uh, here we are. But um, I'm looking for Kickstarter. I have no bias towards either. Um, there's pros and cons to both. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Kickstarter, my, my biggest problem is that you can fund and then not fund. Yeah. <laughs> that bugs the hell out of me. You won't know it till your final day and you've done everything you can and suddenly it's not enough. That bugs me from the creator perspective. From the, the buyer perspective, you can put this number towards the campaign without having to be terrified of having that money in hand at that moment. And that yeah. can make a massive difference either way. <laughs> it seems and, like to me, I, and, and, you know, not to go too deep into it, but um, yeah. the Indiegogo business model 
feels more conductive to or conducive to you know, getting comics out and what's going to work for more creators. I, I think there's been a lot of discussion around the various politics around both, but just, again, getting rid of that and just going to what gets money in the hands of creators, what tends to be a safer route for comics specifically, it feels like Indiegogo's model is, is better or healthier. Um, but. I would think the model itself is, however, the ecosystem isn't there. The ecosystem yeah. is definitely completely built on a bunch of creators' backs. Yeah. Now, that's cool. uh, and that's what we're talking about the 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 you know the leverage and going between. And so that's that's the the toughie is two two very different systems. Whereas Kickstarter, you're thrown into this this sea of comics and creations, mm -hmm. and uh, but they're better at promoting it. So it, it's a very tough uh, uh, balance to walk, and I think each creator, you know, should look at it, find what works for them, and if you can do both successfully, like a few other folks have been able to do, um, then do it both. Use whatever tool you've got, um, if it's within, you know, what you find acceptable to get your product in people's hands and to earn that money. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, there's not one path to the finish line uh, for sure, and I think it's. Uh, I don't know. I, I wanted to ask you a question because there, there's a lot of noise around these platforms and it gets to be, it, it doesn't, it, 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 the details are what matters <laughs> around yeah. what's going to happen for your campaign. The rest is just what people get upset about on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. And that's, that's another thing I've avoided. I know all these things. It, you can't be ignorant of sure. these things and, and engage with these platforms. It just doesn't happen. But Again, that's another. There's there's a lot of sacrifices to make, and there's some I deem unacceptable, and there's some I am willing to swallow. And then there's quite a quite a few that are just like, well, if I can utilize this tool, and it's a tiny percentage, and I don't really care on the wider perspective uh, of politics. I'm I'm I've got mine, and mine usually tends to lean toward just leave everybody alone. So <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> I don't yeah. really uh, care too much uh, uh, about the the rest of that. You know, I, yeah. if I'm buying a comic off Indiegogo or off of Kickstarter, my money is going to that creator. A small percentage of that creator's funds that came from me is going to that platform. So it's on the creator on that end. As a buyer, it doesn't matter to me too much. Yeah. Um, some people very different, and they are welcome to that opinion, and it's a good one to have because most progress is made from conflicting ideologies finding a mid ground. So yeah. you got to have both. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to let them butt heads and you got to see what falls out. And hopefully it's better than before. If not, they'll butt heads again anyway. So <laughs> just do what you got to do. Well, I think that's really well said. Uh, as you are, um, as you continue to expand your universe, add other titles, do you see a, do you see a day where you've got four or five separate comics all kind of in this, this universe, all kind of going simultaneously? I really hope so. <laughs> That's the the end goal. We have um, pitches, eight page pitches of every title ready to go. They have an artist attached and such. I haven't pulled the trigger on campaigns for it because I've been seeing what our campaigns have reached. Our first attempt was that Cactus Coyote, and the demand wasn't there, even though we had. Uh, been marketing the free to read manga for months and months. We marketed the campaign. There was support for the campaign and for what we were doing. Just did not land. So, and then and then it ends up on this uh, the contest, and a bunch of people wanted to look at it and engage with it. So it's it's really hard to know uh, that that correct path. And um, I, 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 my hope is. If we can earn that, the Patreon would be the best way to do it. Um, I know folks don't like that. And there's also Subscribestar. We have that too. But I don't like Subscribestar so much because of Stripe. But um, there's a whole lot of different uh, you know, ways to get it. However we can get it, if we had enough money per month, then that's what we'd be doing. Uh, we'd be making comics. We'd be making these minis and putting them out for folks. But uh, we haven't earned that position yet and uh we're ready for it when we get there um is the best way to say i do see that my my hope and my goal is to have these titles coming out like that um the original plan was say we get about 5k a month something like that then we could produce a jack irons every two months and we could produce another title the next two months while getting the previous title and then just kind of alternate and go there to start with and if we got further then we do more at the same time uh, we have the creative teams i just brought on another writer who's extremely talented um and uh there's there's a lot of possibility a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm for what we're doing uh just trying to find the right way for us to utilize it and earn that position 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I mean, that's the, the step to be successful is start putting one foot in front of the other and just get there. So yeah, exactly. I, I love it. I, I, so are there any big, um, well, I don't want to say big, but, but who are some people? And I, I, by the way, I like that you found some talent. It's unique. There are new people to the industry and everything else. But are there some creators you'd love to work with someday that you'd love to have kind of take part in your universe? Uh, like mainstream creators or ones I've worked with or spoke to either, or what either or just kind of either either. Either. who's your dream team? Okay, well, I my my one of my bucket lists is the the Ghost Rider run to Dan, uh, Road to Damnation, uh, mm-hmm. run by Garth Ennis and Clayton Crane is what got me to want to make comics. I had never seen art presented that way. I'd never seen the subject matter presented that way, and my teenage self was like, "Holy shit." comics can do this and so that got me looking into the edgier side and i'm like these guys are playing with spider-man as well these guys are w- wow okay so that's how wide open this this spectrum of of comics creation is is that you could have a mass murderer like punisher you know come from a spider-man title and then make his own path um punisher max is what got me a got me to be a consistent comic reader um mm-hmm. and uh Really, um, so Clayton Crane, I would love to work with Clayton Crane. His digital work is just outrageous. I don't think they pay enough to get him to do more than a cover anymore. So I would have to have some leverage to do that. But um, aside from that, um, honestly, I want to work with folks who are enthusiastic about what we're doing. And, And through our campaign, there's so many amazing fan artists and creators themselves who lent their energy and their effort to our campaign in a piece or in promotion or in so many other ways like you're doing right now um, that there's many of those folks who I brought on uh, to, to, tentatively work on these titles nothing's been signed nothing's been done because of the lack of funding i I do not do that you know i have to have the energy to manifest the thing before i get somebody to start manifesting it Um, and um you know there's there's some amazing people bruce patnod was one of the the folks who did he did like six pieces for for jack irons when he saw it and enjoyed it and we we share promotional bits and he does great wonderful work um I would love to work with him some more. Uh, Carl, Carl Oro, who people know from Death Sworn, um, I've worked with a little bit here and there, and he does amazing line art that works perfect for another title doing uh, Lady Silverado. There's a lot of folks I'd like to work with. Uh, we tried that again with this campaign, too. We had a stretch goal for the pitch mini of Tracker Top Predator, who's the second, who, who's the co-star in issue number three. Wanted to have a little eight-page silent mini. It, it, did, it just had the sound effects. It wasn't going to have much dialogue, if any, maybe in the last panel, maybe. But um, it, 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 And that was with our letterer, Vincent Rush, who also does amazing line art. And um, oh, yeah. I... I just would have, you know, uh, the, the energy is not there to work with new folks, but there's, there is no limit to the amount of talent out there. And that's why I'm, I'm always trying to get new creators to reach out. And I'm, I'm always happy when I find out some other creator found a, say a piece of fan art that, that one creator did for our work and then they wanted to color it. And then suddenly a couple months later, they're collaborating on a comic that brings me so much joy. Um, so the main thing is I just want to work with folks who want to work and who have the ability to get it done and can do quality work. And there's no limit to that in indie and, and unknown indie as well. Folks who have been doing it for 10, 15, 20, 30 years in Bruce's case. And he was doing underground comics where you, when you literally were assembling and handing out your own little books um, and you weren't networking with anybody, but the people in your town, um, there's so much experience to take advantage from uh, or take advantage of in terms of, you know, utilize, not so much uh, the connotation of take advantage of. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. No, uh, no, I, 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 make it, I, I mean, yeah. assembling a good team, assembling people who want to work with you, want to build these universes up, want to do more. I mean, that's the that's the trick for, for how you survive. And it, it strikes me. I mean, in my mind, when I look at what you've done and, and kind of everything you put together, it's really about getting you discovered at this point. I think you, you've done the homework of you know, creating this universe, finding talent, putting out good product, getting all the logistical stuff. Now it's just getting more exposure. And I think it's going to, I might, I, I suspect it's going to happen for you very quickly. That would be the hope. Of course. Um, 
I've been, again, uh, most on the main industry is reluctant to reach out to the indie. Um, maybe it's because competition uh, between, you know, there's only so many jobs. Um, and and uh, uh, indie can be the same. I don't tend to have that issue, but I've seen it plenty where they will not acknowledge somebody else exists, whether it's high quality or whatever, simply because they're competition in the same market. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, really, uh, really, I don't... Uh, I don't know. I've met with so many amazing, uh, you know, professional established artists. I, I've been blessed to that. That means our work does get noticed and is appreciated. But uh, just like that Frank Martin thing, that was crazy. He came out of nowhere and he's like, hey, this looks great. And it's the, the colors for East to West. That was, And I went ahead and read East to West. And it's a little too Games of thrones for me, but it's good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just a little, a little too much. Hickman's a little much. But uh, the artistry, yeah. Nick Dragota did a great job. And Frank did a beautiful job of giving it a tone and, and breathing life into those lines and uh, those little things keep me going and believing that there will be a moment where there's a tipping point and and you know people discover and enjoy what we're doing my hope is that tipping point isn't something i didn't f foresee that's a, a negative <laughs> that i have to have to leverage uh, i don't know you never know the future but uh i'm hopeful i'm hopeful no i i do i think i think it's a matter of time it's just a matter of, of you know making sure you have the confidence so i want to just tell you how, how happy i am with everything you've done and i think it's I want to keep going so i'm i'm happy to promote you any day of the week but it <laughs> is, um, yeah i just I, I want you to keep going because i think this is a universe i'd like to see continue to grow um and and the hard work you put in i, I want to see it go somewhere so uh, so do we. I think that's that, that certainly keeps me going on those off days, uh, particularly because uh, I have not made a dime off of this book. <laughs> yeah. our, our creative team has. Um, in fact, uh, this time, because of that last day funding, I've, I've had to put quite a bit of personal finances to get everything done uh because covid changed a lot of paradigms oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh that's still going on there's still bumps but uh learning from each lump i take and uh doing my best to roll with it and then you know give you folks the fact that i took the punch rolled it rolled with it and here's what i came out with you know and um so far that's been okay so far that that's worked and been a a tried and true method but uh as things speed up might not be so much but again one day at a time one step at a time well i love your positivity i just i, I like i said i i think um you've earned your success so now we just now we're ready for it to happen so i i think and, and i mean a lot of people have dreams of making a comic and they never actually get it done they never actually get it to do it and i think the fact that you have published work it's out there you can see it number of different platforms i mean it's 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 a line very few people ever get to so well done there yeah and i've started branching out a bit from ironverse comics as well i've worked with ash can publishing which was doing a small press mini little anthology books that you do a, a short story paired to a uh, a piece of art flash fiction uh that was a fun experience i learned from i didn't write much prose before but i couldn't help myself but to write in the ironverse <laughs> comics universe so those mm -hmm. also are part of that and um i just recently wrote a short for uh the campaign the kill journal which funded recently and it was horror another thing kind of out of my wheelhouse and that's going well uh, steve our colors was picked up for the whole book and um hopefully that gets a little bit more more steam for them uh, maxi was also the whole ironverse team basically was picked up for different parts of this book which i loved seeing they deserve more work their work deserves to be out there more and uh, uh hopefully they don't get poached but if they were to i would just be clapping i hope somebody can pay them enough to keep going and make it a living because they are wonderful talents yeah. I, I, I want to be successful, so I'm going to make sure I'm helping to make that happen. Um, listen, I, I want to thank you for the time you've given me today. Is there anything I missed kind of in kind of going over things? It's been just a pleasure talking to you, and I hope we can do it more. Uh, one of these days, if you want to live stream with me, we can talk to, to people and get some feedback live. You'd be up there. Oh, I'd love to do that. Absolutely. I do. That's one thing you you missed. That's also a link on ironverse.comics.com is I have my own YouTube channel. We have our own YouTube channel. Uh, again, Ironverse Comics. I've been mm -hmm. doing weekly creator interviews every Thursday evening. Um, and uh, I tend to do like gameplay streams and such where chats open for folks to reach out to me on any concerns, questions, uh, just interaction. Um, be great if folks check that out. Ironverse Comics um, on YouTube. Just sub and give it a, give it a chance. Look at at it see if it's for you if it's not no worries and i um, trying to build that just so that there's another platform again utilizing every tool that's there and um 
I think that's about all we missed. Uh, besides that, we got a Patreon. Again, everything's under ironversecomics.com. All the links are at the top. Pretty easy to find. Of course, the merch supports us quite a bit, too. That that goes straight straight to me, besides the percentage that, that goes to manufacturing and shipping it. Um, so that helps a little bit. And uh, honestly, if you're interested in our work, anybody's interested in our work, uh, find a way to support it, even if it's just reading it and, and saying, you know, you liked it, you didn't like it. Um, critique, again, we have a hard time finding critique. Uh, uh, positive or negative and i save every bit because i want to know what people think from a different perspective than my own and um that makes a massive difference and um yeah just just thank you uh thank your your uh subscribers and uh anybody who checks out our work it, it's how this stuff gets made I, I can't emphasize enough that our entire body of work is because folks gave us a chance and enjoyed what we're doing. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. I, I don't see myself suddenly becoming independently wealthy enough to, to fund these myself, which means your folks' dollars go a little bit further in, in, in emotion and, and in, in heart for me. Uh, it, it means a lot. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, all the links uh, will be in the description of this video and you should be seeing them on the screen right now, unless I'm a fool and don't know what I'm doing, which is also possible, but no, you'll, you'll see those links there. Um, and I do recommend you go subscribe, check things out, uh, check out the Patreon, check out the, the Indiegogo for the rest of the month. And then um, you definitely can find these on, on digital and everything else. And, you know, let's, let's support Cody here. I think he's come up with a wonderful universe and you just need to see more of it. All right. Well, I, again, thank you all so much. Um, appreciate your time, Perch. Uh, I, I've tried to make that emphasize in every release that you know time matters very much. It's it's the irreplaceable commodity, and so anybody taking time to listen to us right now, a, a gift that cannot be returned. Um, yeah, thank, uh, thank you, definitely, people yeah. who took this, and uh, and hopefully I'll be able to do something for you myself. I'd love to to draw or do something in your universe sometimes. So I'll hit you up. Oh, that. please do. Um, that the original M part of my thought with Jack always is he's a folk hero and my hope is to unleash that to other writers at some point once he's been defined and we've done what we want with him we want to release this universe eventually if possible because again there's so many stories in it so I've been growing the team for that and that's more defined work but at the end of the day eventually I wouldn't mind if if so 20 years down the line it went public domain and people could just have have fun with this character that's supposed to be part of everyone oh even better that's awesome well much success and uh yeah you could check out cody at the links below and and please do thanks for chatting with me thank you thank you so much